south of the neck, where the green fork, red fork, and blue fork meet is the trident, the biggest river in the riverlands. North of the inn at the crossroads, the king road travels along the green fork of the trident. From the ruby ford on until the twins, there is no crossing the river. When sailing down the red fork towards Maidenpool, you'll pass the ruby ford. The ruby ford is the crossing where Robert Baratheon knocked Rhaegar's rubies from his breastplate. The riverlands are central Westeros. It borders the north, the vale, the crown lands, and the westerlands, only separated by the golden tooth. When the kingdoms are at war, the riverlands bleed. As of now, River Run was gifted to the Freys for their loyalty, if there ever was such a thing. But the liege lord of River Run is Peter Baelish, and the ruling seat is Harrenhal. But the real heroes of River Run carry no banners and pledge no fealty. The Brotherhood without banners. The band of outlaws, some call them outlaws, some call them robbers or bandits, fanatics and rovers, but they are heroes to some. The Brotherhood has some interesting people in it and holds more secrets than we know. There's a little Ned, the Lord of Starfall and the heir of House Dane and a Lem Lemon Cloak who could be Sir Richard Lonmouth, Rhaegar's former squire, the Knight of Skulls and Kisses. They call Lem Lem because he wears a yellow cloak, so Lem is just short for Lemon Cloak. But Tansy once said if he washed all the piss out of it, he'd be exposed as a Knight of the Kingsguard. We are introduced to Lem Lemon Cloak and Sir Richard Lonmouth, both in a storm of swords. Archer, Lem, and Tomo Sevens find Arya Stark after escaping Harrenhal. Also in A Storm of Swords, we get the name of Rhaegar Squire, told to Daenerys by Artiston Whitebeard while she was aboard the Balerion, Sir Richard Longmouth, the Knight of Skulls and Kisses. The banner of House Longmouth are lips and skulls on a yellow field. Lem wears a yellow cloak. When Arya first sees him, she thinks him to look like a soldier. When they visit the Ghost of High Heart, she asks Lem for kisses for her dreams. She asks Tom O'Sevens for songs because he's a singer. So why ask the Oaf in the Yellow Cloak for kisses? It's not because he's handsome. His description is rather undesirable. But then she goes on to say her mouth will taste of bones. Sounds like skulls and kisses to me. But maybe she just says that because she's like a hundred years old. The most interesting thing about Arya and Lem's time together was this exchange. Tom O'Seven sings this song. My feather bed is deep and soft and there I'll lay you down. I'll dress you all in yellow silk and on your head a crown. For you shall be my lady love and I shall be your lord. I'll always keep you warm and safe and guard you with my sword. And how she smiled and how she laughed, the maiden of the tree. She spun away and said to him, no feather bed for me. I'll wear a gown of golden leaves and bind my hair with grass, but you can be my forest love and me your forest lass. Then Lem says to Gendry later, we're outlaws, low-born scum, most of us except in his lordship. Don't think it be like Tom's fool songs neither. You won't be stealing no kisses from princesses, nor riding in no tourneys in stolen armor. So is Tom O'Seven's song about the knight in the laughing tree? The popular belief is the knight in the laughing tree was Liana. So is Liana the maiden of the tree in the song? And the song says, I'll dress you all in yellow silk. Yellow silk screams, Dorn. There is almost never a scene shot in Dorn or with Dornish people that doesn't have yellow silk or yellow material in it. The Tower of Joy was in Dorn. Does Tom O'Sevens know about Liana? Did Lem teach him the song? Did he make the song of a story Lem told him? Well, Richard Longmouth was at the tourney of Harrenhal and promised Ares to unmask the Knight of the Laughing Tree. So what does he know and what could he reveal? In the books, he's on a collision course with Jamie, and they would know each other. They would know each other well. 
Richard Limemouth was also presumed to be with Rhaegar when he took Lyanna and also was with him when he was fighting on the Trident. So mayhaps he never left the Trident. He never left the Riverlands. And he just roamed there. Maybe he was a broken man. Similar to the Hound, after all of it. Maybe he got the last kiss, too. And he died but was brought back. The question is, what does he know and what will he reveal? In the show, he was dead after two episodes and he was portrayed in a really bad light. It's just like he was there and then he wasn't. But in the books, he's with Lady Stoneheart right now, hanging folks. But could Lem be Richard Longmouth? If so, he knows a hell of a lot. Also in the Brotherhood, we have Beric Dondarrion, squire and nephew, Edric Dane, known as Ned. Ned is the Lord of Starfall. He could be the next Sword of the Morning. The next badass, dawn-wielding Sword of the Morning, and literally no one talks about him. And no, he's not a secret Targaryen. But who is he really? Well, he goes by Ned, and he's described as shy and good-natured. I know another good-natured shy Ned, Lord Eddard Stark. Brandon had to ask Ashar Dane to dance with Ned at the tourney of Harrenhal because Ned was too shy. He tells Arya that Jon Snow is his milk brother and that they were both nursed by Wyla. He says that Wyla is Jon Snow's mother. He also tells Arya about Ashar Dane and Ned falling in love at Harrenhal and about Ashar Dane killing herself from being heartbroken. He never mentions a child though, but Sir Barristan does. He says Ashar's baby was stillborn. What I really think happened is Ashar got pregnant at the tourney of Harrenhal by Ned Stark. It wasn't dishonorable because his brother Brandon was betrothed to Catelyn. So let's say there's a Stark baby and it could be Edric. His true age could just be mixed up because if we take the age that we are given, it's not possible. But he could have literally been conceived any time during the war. When Ned is talking to Robert, he sounds legit hurt about dishonoring Catelyn. But another possibility is their child could be Ilaria Dane, Ashar's supposed younger sister, whom no one knows her age. But she is betrothed to Beric Dondarrion, and that could put her age in a Game of Thrones around the same age or older than Daenerys. Edric mentions everything but this baby. So he may not know about the baby because the baby could either be him or his aunt, Ilaria. His father is supposedly Sir Arthur Dane's older brother. We don't know Sir Arthur Dane's brother's name and there's no mention of him anywhere, but that's supposed to be his father. His name is Edric and they call him Ned. He seems to also hint at some type of admiration towards Ned Stark as well. He talks about um, wanting to speak to him at the tourney of the hand, but not knowing what to say. I don't know about y'all, but if a man killed my uncle and then was the cause of my aunt to kill herself, I wouldn't admire him or be named after him. I would have probably cracked Arya's head just like off a of GP, honestly. So what's really going on here? Something strange for sure. In the books, Barrack is dead. Half of the Brotherhood are following Lady Stoneheart. Lem is with that bunch. And the other half went their separate ways. And little Ned went to take Barrack's bones back to Blackhaven. So literally, everything we want to know is in the hands of a band of outlaws. Ned, the Lord of House Dane, possible future Sword of the Morning, and a man that wears a lemon cloak that could be the Knight of the Skulls and Kisses that was present at Harrenhal, Lyanna's abduction and the trident. Could Lem and Lady Stoneheart bump into Jon Snow? What would Lem reveal if Lady Stoneheart wants to kill him? Could little Ned be Ned's son? Could Illyria be Ned's daughter? Let me know what you guys think. Who will be the new leader of the Brotherhood Without Banners now that Beric is dead? And what effect will it have? I'm thinking it could possibly be the Kingslayer. Oh, how proud Tywin would be. Not. Thank you all for watching, and I love talking to you guys and theorizing with you and listening to your ideas. There is this group on Facebook called Fans Beyond the Wall, and we all were always on there theorizing and just having general Game of Thrones discussion and just Game of Thrones fandom. 
There are like over 40,000 members and it's a very active group. I did this video at the request of a friend of mine from the group named Patrick. So if you guys would like to check the group out, I will leave the details in the info box below and you can do that if you'd like to. Also, please subscribe to my channel so you can be notified when I upload. Thanks for watching, sweet summer children, and have a great night.